simultaneously baking some pumpkin truffles while also having a nice little hard cider. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> so just enjoy this random little chat, bake, you know, type of style. Um, so as we're going along, we'll just chat. Um, so why don't you tell everyone how you started getting into figure skating? Well, <laughs> I started skating when I was two years old because my mom is a skating coach and she just put me on when I was two years old, really young. Um, and then I was pretty good on my feet at that age, so my mom recognized my athletic ability and potential at that point, and so she kept me in and I started taking actual coaching classes when I was four and I continued and... Eliana and I actually went to ballet together when we were five and we started skating at the same rink together so yeah yeah your mom was like one of my first coaches I think that's so great yeah Ugh. so classic Nina our lives have been tied together for a while um yes <laughs> and then the great thing that I think about about Paulina's mom is that she actually studied the human body so do you want to go into that a bit she did. So uh, in Russia, you normally, before coaching, you go to university to learn about your specific sport and the biology behind what kind of exercises benefit your body best, depending in the field that you're in. So my mom went to Lefskift Academy in St. Petersburg, and she studied for four years figure skating, um, and she was taught under skating great coaches in Russia, like Nishin, um, which is pretty cool. And then they were taught like all the physical anatomy stuff of what exactly relates to figure skating and the best exercises um, that correlate directly with strength in skating. Yeah, I think that's really important because a lot, like from my understanding, there are a very minimal amount of coaches that actually verse themselves in the human body when they become figure skating coaches, they kind of just fall into it because they were skaters at one point and then they don't really have the true understanding of how to properly coach anyone because it's not just like go do a double run through because US figure skating tells us you're supposed to do a run through. It's like what is the logic behind it and how does it impact the body? I kind of got it dirty. But. Totally. <laughs> you can just here we can go like this. Three of a spin. Oh, perfect. What is this? Oh now? wait, six tablespoons. Oh, okay, okay, you're good. Perfect. Um, Ooh. and then going off that, you wanna, cause you started a podcast series too. I did. So what kinds of? I mean, you talked about body positivity on that, which I think stems into everything that we talk about here too, about just how to feel comfortable in your body and how to properly fuel yourself in the understanding of my body is changing maybe not just because I'm gaining weight but because I'm going through puberty and my hips are getting wider because physiologically that's just what happens. Um, so what was kind of your personal experience with that? Yeah, so as you said, I just started my own podcast. It is basically all things figure skating, and I'm also trying to cover relevant topics, especially today, in youth skaters, and it really applies to all athletes. It doesn't need to just be skating. Um, so some of those topics, yes, are body image, training environment for young athletes, things like that. And so in terms of, like we were talking about body image, puberty is hard for every kid, every guy, every girl, um, it doesn't matter if you're in sports or not, it's a really awkward phase that people are just super uncomfortable with. And in sport, especially in a sport like figure skating, it, it creates 
this really hard line where yes we want to grow and become young women or young men but at the same time it's going to cause all these effects where our balance is going to be off or our weight is, might drastically change our height might drastically change all of those things are really going to affect our sport our skating sometimes somebody has really really steady slow growth and they're just constantly doing little adjustments sometimes somebody has crazy growth in a year and they come back looking completely different and that throws them off for a few years until they can stabilize all their levels and then they're kind of back in the game but it's different for everybody and I think right now specifically the culture has become everyone thinks you need to be really small you need to yeah. be really thin uh, but there isn't one set stereotype of the perfect skater or the perfect athlete yeah. we come in all shapes and sizes and people need to be paying attention to what works best for their specific body type and so that comes with nutrition, that comes with exercise, that comes with sleep, that comes with literally everything. What you should be doing is trying to make your body as strong as it can possibly be. Yes. It's not about trying to be as tiny or as thin as you can possibly be because if you come out and you have more of an athletic build rather than a skinny ballerina build, it doesn't matter if you hit all the jumps or you finish your program yeah. with like, lasting energy. Yeah. That's what matters. Yeah, that's like the funniest thing where a lot of skaters want to, you know, be so petite. And even when I went through that phase and I looked so great, I mean, you could take a picture and I was like, damn, look at that. And then <laughs> I'd be getting through the run through and like at the end I was completely winded and I just couldn't breathe. And I was like, why, like, why did I purposely do this for my body to look a certain way when like my main job is to do this program and I can't even, like I can barely get through it. So I think just the emphasis is on the wrong things so the more that we have you know past athletes really anyone talking about these subjects the more it gets the word out there and maybe you know it'll just be that one last thing that clicks for a girl she's like yeah I I believe that like look this skater is like my role model and look what she's talking about she has been through these things like why do I have to push my body and like see what's already like what I know is gonna go wrong instead of just you know, maybe taking someone else's advice, so. Right, and I think another really important thing to remember, especially in this sport in this country, the US, right? We were just talking about how my mom came from a different country, from Russia, and they're educated before they go into coaching about like all of these different things. In the US, a lot of coaches, a lot of judges, um, they themselves may not have been actual like elite athletes or they haven't gone through specific edu educational trainings that teach them what is actually necessary for certain body types and athletic careers and so if you're getting a judge or a coach or whoever commenting on your weight and whatnot and that you know is sparking a lot of young girls right now to be developing eating disorders at really young yeah. ages and that's that's not okay and something that all kids should remember are these are not professional people who see yes. you every day know what your regimen is like like it, it is not their like job to tell you to drop a few pounds yeah. or you look better when you're thinner if you're not going to be landing the jumps if you do that yeah because you know? they just see you in that like one split instance like literally for what four minutes on the ice and from there they're what gonna like assess your lifestyle and how you're supposed to be fueling yourself like that's not really it's not plausible that's not the right way to go about it you really have to take into account everything like understand a person's habits and like how they're feeling maybe they look a certain way but they feel great they feel like that run through is the easiest thing ever those jumps are like solid every day in practice like then that's all that matters yeah the, I think it's really important just to remember that like when when judges or coaches or officials make inappropriate comments to you like that they aren't professionals they're not a professional nutritionist they're not a professional trainer, fitness trainer that is like certified in these specific things that are supposed to relate to building your body in the best way. And that's why you can't be taking those kind of things personally and then thinking, well, maybe if I eat sauteed mushrooms and carrots for lunch <laughs> and a yogurt parfait for dinner, I'm gonna land my triple Lutz tomorrow. That's not, yeah. that is not productive, especially to a growing body. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's also really important from that respect to know what each qualification means. So to understand what a registered dietitian has to go through, their education 
in order to be able to tell you because realistically only a registered dietitian is allowed to tell you what to eat. Everyone else can recommend something but legally they aren't allowed to tell you what you're supposed to eat. So just knowing that background information of what does, what does my nutritionist know, registered dietitian, what does my strength coach know, how does that make him qualified in order to tell me all these different things and then from there you can kind of take what other people say with a grain of salt like if your coach is telling you something just know deep down that that's not really their job they could be doing it out of like a good good intention but really they don't know what they're saying so don't just be like yes my coach said that and that's like it that's all I'm gonna do I think it's also important to speak up if you feel like your team or your coaches or even your parents for that matter are constantly making these comments to you maybe about your body change, your weight change, anything, or your height change that can be possibly affecting your skating. I know for me personally, it was really difficult when my body changed drastically during puberty and I was trying to skate to have my coaches and my mom constantly be harping me about it and making these tiny side comments. And for them, it was a way to help me understand and realize every day that I needed to be actively working on trying to be as fit as possible. But it, it doesn't come with such quick change. For yeah. me, if I have a bad day and my jump isn't going well, and to have my coach say, well, it's because you're heavy. Yeah. That is not a fix that I'm going to fix in that hour of training. Yeah. That is not helpful to a skater. And so, yes, you can be aware and you can understand that maybe you should be trying different things with your diet or your exercise plans to make you as fit as possible but that's gonna take a few weeks. It may take a few months. It's not going to be the next day. So if you feel like the people in your team are doing things that are constantly making you feel bad about yourself or shrinking, that's how I felt, it's important to talk to them and tell them, yes, I realize I need to make changes and I'm going to, but it's a long process and I need you to stop reminding me every single day. Yeah, there's, um. I think, like you said, it's important to speak out about it and then be like, I understand, but is there something that I can do in this moment? Like what is, give me like a technical thing, something that is realistic that I can try and work on rather than just getting these negative comments that are just bringing you down, maybe making you more frustrated, making the practice session even less productive, and then I mean, that's not helping you, that's not helping the coach. Everyone's just getting frustrated and upset. So you have to try and work together and come to a compromise of how to go through those things. Exactly. Yeah. And I think I saw I saw a video on Twitter of this girl, I want to say from Russia, and I think she just landed a quad. I don't know if you saw a tiny, tiny I mean, little girl. I don't doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I think she was like, I don't want to say her age for sure, I don't remember, but definitely like pre-puberty. And I was like, wow, everyone was talking about it. Like, this is incredible. And I'm like, first off, she's tiny. Second off, she hasn't hit puberty. She's most likely gonna lose her ability to do that quad or it's gonna become drastically more difficult. She's already like putting her body through something so intense. And like, what, she's gonna be 16 and have an injury? Like, what? what's the point? Are you in it for the long haul or in the moment? Like. I think you need to set up like a more realistic game plan and I think that's less so in ice dance because ice dance is like you know you're not putting so much weight on your body it's not like pairs you're kind of just like being lifted and along for the ride and it's a it's a pretty great time but I think for single skating especially when you see like all these young athletes doing these crazy jumps at such young ages you're like what's your life going to be like in the future like are you going to need like double hip replacement surgery knee replacement surgery like What's Those are really great questions to ask. <laughs> um, yeah, no, there's there's a lot of videos circulating now of really, really young teens, tweens, who are doing triple axles, who are doing triple, triple combinations, who are doing quads now. And it's amazing that they've achieved such an accomplishment at such a young age. I didn't do that. Like, that's, that's crazy. And I give them the full respect and everything for being able to reach that but I was just talking about this with Ashley Wagner it there is a huge difference between somebody who's gone through puberty and somebody who hasn't yeah. if you can do a triple axel and or a quad after puberty when you've already fully developed that 
is impressive. Yeah. That is respect. That is pushing boundaries in a whole new way because your body is just different. It, it simply is. And, um, so that's why we do see skaters that have pushed those boundaries. Like Elizaveta Tektamisheva, uh, Mariah Nagasu did it at the last Olympics. We just saw Amber Glenn landed a triple axel. That is yeah. so impressive. And that speaks volumes for women's sports. Absolutely. But with teens who haven't gone through puberty yet, it's it's still, it's a child sport at that yeah. point because they haven't gone through the bodily changes yet to see where they'll be when they can have a long career, longevity. Yeah, yeah I feel like when you see young girls land like triples or quads, you're like, ha, just you wait till, <laughs> till you hit puberty, girl, because like, you don't even know the half of it. Yeah, it, it's definitely, especially technique-wise, it's really easy to fudge doing spinny type technique um, with really young skaters who are tiny, but once they start growing, once they start getting heavier, they start getting taller, their center of balance is off, if they don't have proper technique, it really shows. And then at that point you're looking at them and you're saying, well, they're not the skater they used to be, they're, yeah. you know, they've grown and they've lost it all. And at that point, you're really looking at the skater and you're like, what are her other qualities other than those fancy triple axles and quads that she was doing? What yeah. makes her stand out now and makes her still on top? And if that's not there, why were they hyping her up when she was a child and she, like, the only thing clearly that she had going for her was doing a quad or doing a triple axel yeah. the program? The sport is supposed to be the whole package. It's supposed to be how attractive can a woman look on the ice for the judges and the viewers. And if we're pushing out this new generation of tiny prepubescent skaters who yeah. are pulling these big jumps, but they're gone in the next year or two because they start going through puberty, we're really losing a huge audience of skating because yeah. people tune in and they expect to see somebody like Michelle Kwan yeah. or somebody like Tanif Belbin. Yes. They're not expecting to see like this tiny girl that's gone next year. Yeah. I think, here if you want to, you want to scoop it up, um, there's something, I f figure skating can be a very, I don't want to say like sexist sport, but as I was always told by my coaches, the girl is the picture and the guy is the frame. The guy is only there That's to hilarious. frame, to frame the girl, he's there to make sure she's safe, um, make sure she looks pretty, and the girl's just like the, the most important part. Um, and I think that's what, that's one of the components of ice dance that I do like a bit more than single skating is because I feel like single skating is very emphasized on jump, 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 like how many rotations can you get in the air? I think, I remember like when I was a single skater, not really great, but there was like the spiral sequence, you know? Yeah. You had the like... There was a huge spiral sequence, they took that out. Yeah, spiral sequence, yeah. and like, that was so beautiful because it like, gave artistic freedom and like, you could tailor it to the music and like, bring more like, expression into it rather than just like, I'm going from one jump, I'm gonna do some crosswords, I'm gonna do a three turn and like, something else and I'm gonna go do another jump. Um, and actually in Ice Dance they changed one of the footwork series to make it shorter and make it more expressive. I think it's called like footwork B. So that I think is really important that we have to kind of go back a little bit to like the older style of like bringing out your like feminine side or like whatever it is that you are as a person but like just really being true to who you are and letting that all show through. And I think it does get like trampled on a little bit by the technical aspects. It does. Skating's, skating has changed so much in the last decade. Um, you know, when they changed the judging system, that really affected skating, for yeah. sure. But I think that's good in a way, because we are sport first, so the technical matters do, like... The technical stuff does matter, yeah. absolutely. It should be first and foremost. But, like we were saying before, it's the whole package. The artistry mm -hmm. score should be right up next to it. Yeah. And so if the skaters are lacking that tech, their artistry is what makes people want to watch anyway. Yeah, absolutely. The The best thing that a skater can do is even if they miss the element, if the rest of their program is amazing and you still watch it and be like, I love that program, even if they made a mistake, 
that's what you're looking for. You're not looking for the one and done big trick at the beginning of the program and the rest yeah. of it like is kind of like not that great, but they have the big trick so they're the best. That's not the full package of skating and that's why we're losing viewers now. Yeah. Um, if we want to make another batch because it's kind of small, I have this pumpkin butter from Trader Joe's. Oh. If we want to do one with pumpkin butter instead of peanut butter. Oh, I'm down. Yeah, I feel like that'd be really good. Let's do it. Okay. Um, I think that, yeah, I don't know. I think that with figure skating, it's very, because it's so, it's interesting because it's so aesthetic, but when you bring in that like technical aspect of it, you're kind of losing the aesthetic nature of the sport. And then it's like, why are we placing why are we placing so much emphasis on physique when all we're asking is for people to do crazy jumps? Like, I think at that point you would just want to be like, either be artistic and like look a certain way or like, who cares about your body and like, let's do all the crazy jumps. Not that I'm saying it has to be so split, but I feel like that would be the mindset. But asking girls to be like super petite, super thin, and then having that emphasis be on like, what's the craziest jump you can do it's kind of like contradictory it's like why why would we why would we do it that way yeah honestly there's like a classic case scenario i can bring up that a competitor of mine she was a really really outstanding skater had great jumps she was very athletic she was also a beautiful strong girl like no one would say that she wasn't gorgeously feminine or anything like that yeah but she had a different bulkier smaller body type um that resonated with her huge jumps yeah but she felt very insecure about how the current top skaters were younger girls from russia who have very very thin arms and legs and bodies because they are very young and they haven't gone through puberty yet and so she started photoshopping a lot of her photos oh and it was <laughs> Yeah, it, and it just, it, it's sad to see because, you know, like, this skater is a beautiful person who has muscles, is very strong, yeah. is a beautiful girl, but she feels the need to Photoshop herself to make her look thin, like, what she thinks people are looking for in the sport, and that's just yeah. not right, you know? Yeah, and um, something Paulina and I were talking about earlier was birth control, and I think, I think that could be brought up now with talking about puberty because yeah, I think a lot of girls like as soon as you you know start going through puberty and you get your period and then you know it could be due to like cramps or a variety of other reasons but a lot of girls go on birth control and just not really understanding the effects it will have on the body because I do feel like a lot of doctors they don't really like talk to you about like what birth control will do to you even if especially if you're like an elite athlete like you should know how it's changing you physiologically not just like oh I'm not having a period anymore sweet totally I this is this is an interesting topic we've actually been talking a lot about uh, this past year because we've done more research together we've really discovered a lot about the topic of birth control and just how un uneducated we are in the masses as women about what birth control actually does to your body and how it has a lot of side effects that can be negative, can be positive, and there's a lot of unknown, which is kind of freaky because it's kind of like an experiment for women yeah. right now. And yes, it works for a lot of people, and I don't doubt that, and some people have great experiences on it, um, but I just think that people need to be fully informed and really we need to be educated in exactly what birth control is doing to our bodies uh, before we make the decision to actually use it because I know firsthand from my experience I had no idea what I was getting into when I first went on it and when I went to the doctor to get my first round of birth control um, they didn't really give me any information they just told me it was the most effective way um, to prevent yeah. pregnancy or anything like that and then they told me to look at a pamphlet online and decide what I wanted to do. So naturally, all my friends at school, all the people I knew, they were on birth control, so I decided to try it. 
And the negative effects for me, especially as an athlete, was that I gained weight. I gained about 10 pounds. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. Which is very significant for an athlete, especially in our sport. We need to yeah. be as lean and as fit as possible while being strong. And that extra water weight is not good for you. And I, I tried so hard to lose that and I was going on all of these really strict diets and I would be complaining to my mom and telling her I've tried all these diets I'm really doing the best I can and I can't lose weight yeah and she would look at me and she's like what are you on <laughs> and I was like nothing I swear I was I was lying to her about whether or not I was on it because my mom is against it um but I like just didn't listen to her um but I ended up going off of it because um I couldn't lose the weight, and that was really important to my skating career, so yeah. I went off of it. And immediately, a month later, everything was back under control, and I was able to actually get as fit as possible, doing all the same things I was doing when I was on birth control. And that was a, that was a huge telltale sign for me, as a person, that it didn't yeah. work for me. There are a lot of, there are a lot of different effects, I feel like, that no one really shares about. Um, whether it be like weight gain or bad skin or um, I mean there's just so much and even like when you go off of it you have lasting effects and I think when you're growing as an athlete your period is also very essential for like bone density and really like structure and strength and the correct hormones that you need to balance your body and especially when you are an elite athlete let's say you're on birth control it's the same kind of issue with when you lose your period and you don't really realize why that's happening you need your period for bone density and like if you're getting injured all the time and you're not having your period not due to birth control but just like naturally you are inconsistent you have to address why is that happening? What is my diet? What is my stress level? What is my training schedule? Because you need those hormones in your body. And even birth control, although you are getting the same level of hormones, it's not coming from your body. Your brain isn't understanding that I need to produce these levels of hormones on my own to, you know, sustain myself. And it's a it's in, it's a synthetic hormone yeah. called progestin, I think, which masks progesterone. Progesterone. There's, like there's like two different forms that you can get. I, know. I think I think the biggest thing that's really important for all women to consider when they go on birth control is that it doesn't only stop your uterus, your ovaries, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't only stop your period. It affects your entire body and your brain because yeah. your ho hormones are essential to your brain growth and development. So if you're putting that on pause or changing it in some way, you're directly affecting your brain. Yeah. And as an athlete, that could have huge effects, yeah. and we're, we're not taught about it. And I think it's really important for women to educate themselves on what the best type may be, what, like, whether or not it works for them, whether or not the risks involved are worth it potentially hurting their career or that season that year. Because for me, my season, I was on it for about four months, it completely slowed me down in, a, in an insane way. And that wasn't at all the point of me doing it, you know? Yeah. There's... I mean, if you think about it, whenever you take a pill, it's not localized, so it's having an effect on your entire body, whereas let's say like a copper IUD, a copper IUD functions with the copper reacting with the uterus lining and it creates a localized form of birth control. We had a slight intermission because the camera overheated so we we finished with our pumpkin truffles and they're sitting in the freezer for about 20 ish minutes and then we're gonna coat them with some nice extra dark chocolate but the last thought I think we're talking about copper IEDs and really quick the important thing to mention about copper IEDs is that you have to check your own copper levels first because you are putting extra copper in your body so if you already have high copper levels, you could get into copper toxicity. So that's just something else to keep in mind in the ever-growing list of uh, birth control complications. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different forms and options out there. And so I think every girl should be exploring which option works best for them. And personally, after the amount of research that I've been doing and the amount of podcasts and scientists that and doctors that I've been listening to, yeah. it sounds like 
birth control in a lot of ways has been a very easy fix for a lot of women um, and that's okay but we just don't know the long-term effects and you yeah. know the different complications that can arise in your body if you do choose to go on this man-made synthetic drug <laughs> yeah and um, there are more natural ways that you cannot change your body or its rhythm and you know there's there's a lot of different ways there's condoms which always works there's you know the copper IUD isn't hormonal there's yeah. um, family planning which is knowing your fertility cycle and that's actually something that I'm exploring more so is Eliana um, and yeah. it's it's really interesting because we're not taught at all in health education yeah. how to learn what a woman's fertility cycle is which I think is very important and um, essential and not talked a lot, not talked at all when you was figure skating I think there was like one class about like what is your body even for like I mean there are I some... was told to go on birth control after really? I made the Olympic team I hadn't gotten my period yet what? but they said that if I competed on my period they would start me on birth control so that I wouldn't be on that cycle and my mom was with me when I was a minor when they said that to me, and she was like, no way. Um, but oh my god. Yeah, so, so learning that, I thought that was really interesting because from what I've been researching from doctors is that, especially for athletes, birth control, like for me, I gained a lot of water weight. Um, yeah. It doesn't really have you develop the same muscle strength and endurance, Yeah. which is really interesting and not good for sport. And there was a nutritionist and coach for the U.S. women's soccer team that actually tried something with the U.S. women's soccer team, which was to get all of them off birth control. They all got on the same cycle, and then their training plans and nutrition was specifically designed for their women female bodies yeah. on regular menstrual cycles, where they would have really hard trainings, and then the week of the actual um, period, they might pull back a little bit or do a different style of workout and nutrition yeah. that completely helps them with um, maintaining strength and following along with their body's natural rhythms. And they actually had a huge amount of success with it and are literally one of the most successful women's sports teams we have in this country. So yeah. that is pretty significant. And um, I urge you all to listen to <laughs> Dr. Jolene Brightman on the Ben Greenfield podcast. If you want to learn more about this, she gives a really good taste. I had Eliana listen to it. I've listened to a bunch of these kind of topics and podcasts on birth yeah. control in women and the dangers of it, the effects of it. Um, and I think all women should be educated on this before they make the decision to go on hormonal birth control. Yeah, and it was something that I touched base on a little bit with Maddie Hubble when I had her on the series too and it was just that she was you know trying to get back in tune with her body and understanding what the period is and like what happens within your body during that time and then she brought up a really interesting point that when she works out during her like week of the period she notices that she gets injured or her back starts to hurt and it's like it's like <laughs> same why is that not like a component that should be taken into with your training I mean within your body during that time like no one no one is asking you no one's using that as a factor I think that's kind of strange because it is a really big part of you and there's there's a lot of science behind you know the female body is a lot more attractive during like the week before your period because you're ovulating and you know you're like getting more flushed and like your lips are fuller and your body is fuller like there's a reason why that happens and like mating whatever but that does affect your performance and every little thing into your training so I think it would be really nice to either if anyone is working with a strength coach or even their like figure skating coach talk to them about it even though maybe it is a little bit uncomfortable but like all the most important things are kind of uncomfortable so you just have to just talk about it share it and I think the more that we talk about the subject and yeah. the more people start to learn exactly how important the subject is, the more interest you spark in it and the more people realize that it's essential, especially yeah. in sport. So don't be afraid to approach the topic. For me, it was a super awkward, taboo topic to even talk about, and I had my mom telling me not to go on it, but I just didn't trust her or believe her because everybody around me, all of my friends at school, they all were on it. And it wasn't until I did my own trial and error and it failed for me and I went off of it that I started to listen to my mom again and realize what she had been telling me. 
directly correlated with the new research that I was doing with actual doctors and scientists. So it's, it's big. It's yeah. huge. And don't don't just slide it under the table because I think as women and as feminists, you should be celebrating the women's body, the human body, the female yeah. body, and you shouldn't be doing anything that diminishes it, that changes it. You know? I think yeah. that's the most feminist thing you can do is recognize yes we're women yes we're strong yes we should be equal as humans in so many ways but our differences make us very unique and we shouldn't be trying to squash that we should be celebrating that and working it to our best ability so we can be the best women that we can be yeah absolutely that's very that's very well said i think yeah exactly like that we just have to embrace our bodies and all of the like quirky things that come with it whether it be like weight gain bloating like you know acne stuff happens you know and like it's not as scary as you make it out to be as long as you you feel confident in yourself you know that the people around you have your best intentions in mind and just like just share it the more you share it the less scary it becomes because it's like a a normalized thing which is why what we're both trying to do with our series is just spread the word to help anyone, athletes, whatever, um, just understand that these issues are so prominent in the world of athletics and just everyone out there. And the more we can bring it to attention, the less like one girl will be sitting in her room thinking, why don't I look like this girl? And like, I should, I should like go binge eat or something. So, I think it's really, you just have to take it in deeply and be critical with yourself. Like, is this something that's happening to me? Is this what people around me are saying? Is this what I'm doing? Like, that's the hardest part is realizing that there is something that's off. And then from there, I think just finding people around you who are qualified to help you. Totally. It's, it's also, it's really easy to complain about a lot of things in your life that are going wrong. Uh, but it's a step you take after you do that. Are you going to not change anything and continue on in the cycle of this isn't working for me and it makes me upset? Or are you going to say to yourself, something needs to change and I'm going to work to change it right now so that I can feel good. Yeah. I can see results. That's what's important and it's in your hands, you know? Yeah. Not that I'm saying anyone is insane, but I think the like definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again without with expecting a different result. So you can kind of like take that into account a little bit. Like, am I just like running into the wall the same way and like expecting the wall to not be there one time? Like, totally. That's really, that's a good analogy. <laughs> I, I just imagine myself like running into that wall right there. Yeah. Like, Why isn't this working? Yeah, no. If you want change, go get it. That's Absolutely. I think that's I think that's a solid way to end the series. Thank you everyone Sorry. for joining us for this random <laughs> little little shindig on a nice hot Thursday evening in my backyard. So yes. sending love from California. <laughs> if you enjoyed this chat, please subscribe to Women in Athletics and go check out Paulina's podcast series. Bye, everyone. (laughs) Bye.